Hi, my name is Michael Idariji, and we have another video, and this is definitely following in to um, the last two videos where Jesus was on the cross, but now we're going to look at it a little differently, or we're going to look at it on what other people heard. So what happened, Jesus had said, my God, my God, why didst thou forsake me? Who heard or thought they heard Elijah? Now that's a question and also a statement at the same time. But just something to think about. So let's begin with what we read regarding um, that exact moment. So we'll start in Matthew. And uh, we'll start in verse 44 of Matthew 27. So, with the same also, the robbers who were crucified with him were reproaching him. Remember, the robbers, the thieves, on the left and the right side of the cross, which we mentioned in the last two videos, they were reviling or reproaching Jesus. We're reading from the YLT, and um, one of them later changed. And that we're going to touch upon that again, but that's in the last video. And from the sixth hour, darkness came over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a great voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why didst thou forsake me? And here it comes, and certain of those standing there, having heard, said, Elijah, he doth call. Now, we have the original, what was said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, and the translation of that, what it means, my God, my God, why didst thou forsake me? Who would be worried about or know Elijah, the name Elijah? And this is a really big point, because right here, we're at the scene of the crime, and you're going to see who crucified Jesus right now. It's not the Romans. I'm going to say that up front. The Romans did not crucify Jesus. Who thought that Jesus said Elijah? We know what it means now, but the word Eli, or Eli is close to Elijah in the ancient Hebrew. But why would Elijah be something that they're nervous about? Let's keep reading. Elijah he doth call. And immediately, that means right away, now, one of them having run, the guy didn't walk over, run, and having taken the sponge, having filled with vinegar, and having put on a reed, was giving him to drink. Now this vinegar was to hasten, or to silence Jesus, to have him die quicker. Um... That's why. And he had to run. Why was he running? Why is he nervous about Elijah coming? Okay? But the rest said, the rest, rest of who? Said, let alone let us see if Elijah doth come. So there's more than one. One person ran. More than one. Let alone let us see Elijah doth come. About to save him. And Jesus, having again cried with a, with a great voice, yielded the spirit. Okay. And lo, the veil of the sanctuary was rent in two from top to bottom. And an earthquake and the rocks were rent. So we're going to tell you what it is here. And then we're going to read the rest of it. The only people that would know the significance of Elisha would be Israelites, which are the apostles, and the Jews, which were the Pharisees, the Edomites, and the ones that Jesus called the children of the devil in 844. The only Jews that are not children of the devil would be ones that would stay in Jesus' word. Those are the only, that's the qualifier that Jesus gave us in John 8. So, we know that these that thought Jesus said Elijah are not the apostles. And how do we know that? Well, uh, we go to John, 
we go to John 17 now. Not John 17, Matthew 17, sorry. We go to Matthew 17. And Matthew 17, now, now, now earlier in Matthew 17 was the transfiguration where Elijah, Moses, and Jesus were transfigured in before uh, John, Peter, and James. So this is just the same chapter, just a little further down. So we're at 10. And the disciples questioned him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah, it behooveth to come first? And Jesus answered, said to them, Elijah doth indeed come first and shall restore all things. And I say to you, Elijah did already come, and they did not know him. Who did not know him? The scribes, the Pharisees, the Jews, but did with him whatever they would. So also the Son of Man is about to suffer of them. Here is another place where it says that Jesus had to suffer because of who? Herod, the, the Pharisees, and the scribes. Elijah did already come. So the apostles and the Israelites, no. No. Okay, this is a really big deal because this puts them at the scene of the crime. Now we're going we're gonna to jump to another place in the Bible where it talks about Elijah. And then we're going to go into the vinegar. So now we're going to go to Mark. And in Mark, we'll start at 1535. Mark 1535. And we'll go back to 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a great voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted. So we have the interpretation of exactly what Jesus said. This is really important. Everything, the details are spectacular. My God, my God, why didst thou forsake me? And certain of those standing by, having heard, said, Lo, Elijah he doth call. Again, they think that Jesus is calling for Elijah. But we know what it means. But they're worried about Elijah. Why would the Jews be worried about Elijah? Because they just crucified Jesus. We just found that in, in, uh, in, uh, in Matthew 17. And one having run and filled the sponge with the vinegar, having put also on a reed, was giving the him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see if Elijah, if Elijah doth come to take him down. You see, it's back to the devil's if. If thou be, show me, prove to me. Let's see if Elijah comes. Let's see if this is really... These are the Jews saying this. This is not apostles, not Romans. It would be impossible for the Romans to know who Elijah was. We have to understand that. Impossible. Because a Roman soldier would not know the significance of one verse in the entire Old Testament that the significance of Elijah, they would not know. They would not know. And Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, uh, loud cry yielded the spirit. The veil of the sanctuary was rent to from top to bottom. And the centurion who was standing over against him, having seen, having said, cried out, he yielded up the spirit. Truly this was Son of God. This guy was not part of what was happening. He is a centurion or Roman. And here is his salvation. He is saying the same thing that if you uh, watch the other two videos, when Jesus was on the colt and the colt's ass, they were saying he's the son of God. This is what the, when Jesus was uh, brought in Nathaniel in the beginning, he was saying this is the son of God. And now this is the same testimony from this centurion. So now let's see if Elijah... Uh, Elijah is not in Luke. Uh, that that is not in Luke, and it is not in John. So Matthew, Matthew, and Mark talk about the Jews saying Elijah. However, we do know about the vinegar because it's a parallel 
passage. So now what we do find in Luke is this. And this is really interesting now. Okay. I want to go back to 35. So we're at Luke 23, 35. And the people were standing looking on and the rulers also were sneering with them. Now remember, when the other person said, you know, let's see if Elijah doth come. He's a ruler. He gave a command to the person running with the vinegar. He's the ruler, sneering with them. Others he saved, let him save himself. Now, I said this before, but I'm going to touch upon this again. If someone is in uh, any type of um, uh, under uh, uh, bondage, like like like, let's say you have a, a a guard or something, and Jesus is there, they would never say to the prisoner, "Save yourself." They would never say that. This is a religious understanding of how Jews understand um, the writings and how they are from below because they're telling Jesus to save thyself because that's how they understand of keeping the law they're looking to save themselves when they keep the law so and the people were standing looking on and the rulers were also sneering with them saying others he saved let him save himself if again there's that if this be the Christ again show me prove to me means we don't believe these are Jews the choice one of God and mocking him also were soldiers coming near and offering vinegar to him and saying if thou be the king of the Jews save thyself why would a soldier say save thyself from a soldier's perspective he's waiting for Jesus to beg him to let him go that's what a prisoner would say to the captor, let me go. They, the, the person who is in charge of a prisoner would never say, save thyself. This soldier offering the vinegar is the same one that ran with the hyssop. Same thing. If thou be king of the Jews, there's so much evidence here. If thou be the king of the Jews. The Romans don't know. They don't, they're soldiers. The foot soldier doesn't know. He's just going to do his job if it was a Roman. But he's not a Roman. These are Jewish soldiers. We know now they're Jewish because they had the vinegar. If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And there was also a superscription written over him in letters of Greek, Roman, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the evil doers who were hanged was speaking evil of him. So we got to see now this evildoer. I was going to come to this, but we're going to see it again. We have Jesus on the cross, and both evildoers are on the two crosses next to Jesus, one on the right hand and one on the left hand. So one of the evildoers who were hanged was speaking evil of him, evil of Jesus, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. You see... This is the word of the devil here. If thou be, prove to me, prove to us and save me and save yourself. This is the same words that the person with the vinegar said. Gotta, you you, you got to see what the words say because everything is here. E the evidence is here. Uh, Christian or, or you want to say that uh, the New Testament or you want to say... What people understand the Bible has been heavily influenced by the devil. And we know who's the devil's children. John 8.44 tells us. And if those people are going to want to make themselves tied into Jesus to absolve themselves. And, and right here it's telling us who crucified Jesus. If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. And the other answering was rebuking him, saying, Dost thou not even fear God, and thou art in the same judgment? And we indeed, righteously for the things worthy of what we did, we received back, but this one did nothing out of place. This testimony is from the, the, the thief or robber on the right hand of Jesus. The one on the left hand was the evil speaking. Now, they both were evil at one point. But at this point, this guy 
reprimanded the one on the left hand. Not only did he reprimand him, Jesus never spoke to that person. That person does not exist. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Lord, when thou mayest come into thy reign. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today with me thou shalt be in the paradise. And it was as it were the sixth hour. So Jesus answered this person, did not answer the other person. And we know that the person giving the vinegar is a soldier. So let's look up vinegar again and see where that takes us in, in John. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't say Elijah. Uh, we're in John nineteen twenty eight. After this, Jesus, knowing uh, that all things have now been finished, that the writing may be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. A vessel therefore was placed full of vinegar. Same guy. And having filled with a sponge, having vinegar, and having put around a hyssop stalk, did put to his mouth. When therefore Jesus received the vinegar, he said, It hath been finished. And having bowed the head and gave up the spirit, the Jews therefore that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath since it was preparation. Okay, so again, the vinegar. Now, now we're going to see the significance of the vinegar because it's someplace else in the Bible. And where it is in the Bible is very, very interesting. So now we're in Psalm 69. Uh, okay. 69 18 psalm 69 18 be near unto my soul redeem it because of mine enemies ransom me now remember joseph ran was ransomed by judah and jesus was ransomed by the jews thou thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my blushing before thee all mine adversaries reproach hath broken my heart and I am sick, and I look for a bemoaner, and there is none, and for comforters, and I have found none. Remember, Jesus went to the cross by himself. All the apostles fell asleep. There was no one else but him. They even denied him, broke his heart. Remember who broke his heart to? Uh, Peter denied him three times, uh, denied him uh, thrice before the crow, the crow, uh, the crow uh, um, crowed. And, but Jesus brought him back in in John. That's another story. Uh, I've covered that in other videos. And they give for my food gall and for my thirst. Remember Jesus said, I thirst, cause me to drink vinegar. This was given to Jesus by the Jews, not the Romans. Their table before them is for a snare. The Romans didn't make this table. And for a recompense for a trap by crucifying Jesus and speaking ill of Jesus unto this day. This is the same thing. Darkened are their eyes from seeing. Darkened. Now, uh, in, in the last video, the video before, it's like a black hole. They, they become like a black hole. This is where darkness comes from. And their loins continually shake thou, always in fear. Pour upon them thine indignation, and the fierceness, fierceness of thine anger doth seize them. Their tower is desolate. In their tents there is no dweller, for they have pursued him. Thou hast smitten, and recount of the pain of thy pierced ones. Give punishment for their iniquity, and they enter not into thy righteousness. Jesus is here in Psalm 69 talking about the Jews that gave him vinegar, that crucified him. And what's the very next verse? 28. They are blotted. They are. Look at that. It's not that they're, it's not a prayer. This happened. This happened in Psalm. They are blotted out of the book of life, and with the righteous are not written. And I afflicted in pain, thy salvation, O God, doth set me on high. 
I praise the name of God with a song, and I magnify him with thanksgiving, and it is better to Jehovah or Yahweh than an ox, a bullock horned hooved. So this is talking about the sacrifice. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross did two things, more than two, but two very big things. The person on the right hand, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus brought them up to the light of God, so now they share in the same light. And at the same time, the person on the left hand, he pushed them into a black hole. This is where we get the children of the day and the children of the night. And we're going to find that really, this is such a powerful understanding. You know, I hope, God willing, that you get it. Night children. Shouldn't be in that many places. No. Wrong place. Children day. Okay, we're almost there. Jesus, second psalm. This is interesting. God hath in full complete. This is Acts thirteen thirty three. God hath in full completed his this to us, their children, having raised up Jesus, as also in the second psalm it hath been written, My son, thou art. I today have begotten thee. Okay, so. This is the cross, and and that he did raise him up out of the dead, no more to return to corruption. He hath said thus, I will give to you the faithful kindness of David. Wherefore also, in another place, he saith, Thou shalt not give thy kind one to see corruption, for David indeed his own generation, having served, served by the will of God, did fall asleep, and was added unto his fathers, and, and saw corruption." But he whom God did raise up did not see corruption. Let it therefore be known to you, men, brethren, that through this one to you is the forgiveness of sins declared, and from all things from which ye were not able in the law of Moses to be declared righteous, in this one everyone who is believing is declared righteous. See therefore it may not come upon you, that hath been spoken of in the prophets, see ye despisers and wonder and perish because a work I, I do work in your days, a work in which ye may not believe, though any one may declare to you. And having gone forth out of the synagogue of the Jews, the nations were calling upon that on the next Sabbath these sayings may be spoken to them, and the synagogue having been dismissed, many of the Jews and of the devout proselytes did follow Paul, and Barnabas, who was speaking to them, were persuaded them to remain in the grace of God. Now, the difference between the children of the devil and the and and the children of God is the word, Jesus' word. So, if we're looking at the word Jew, the only Jews that were children of God were either proselytes, like Saul, before he became Paul, who was a Benjamite Israelite. He said he's not a Jew. He said that he's of the tribe of Benjamin, but he was under the direction of the, the devil-influenced uh, writing or under devil-influenced interpretation. And that's what we have today. We have people walking around thinking there's such a thing as Judeo-Christian. And somehow are trying to tie themselves, Christians trying to tie themselves together to Jews, and that is the abomination that maketh desolate. The cross is very clear. On the right hand goes up, on the left hand goes down. So the 
the Jews that don't have Jesus' name go down, and these are the liars and the manslayers. And there's no way that they can cross over. Some people in the Bible like to quote about the part that says, you know, Father, forgive them for they have not known what they do. They know what they did. It's all over the Bible. Jesus tells us several places, ye seek to kill me. He's talking about the Jews, the Pharisees, the scribes. They seek to kill Jesus. Pilate even said it. They did it for envy. And now let's go to John for a second for the last few minutes um, before this video is John 17. This is before Jesus was crucified. And it's really, 17 is a fantastic, but let's start from 13, because this is Jesus' prayer, and now, 17, 13, and now unto thee I come, and these things I speak to in the world, that they may have joy, may have my joy fulfilled in themselves, I have given to them thy word, Jesus gave them thy word, Jesus, they didn't get it, on the right hand got it. And the world did hate them. Why does the world hate them? You notice today, if you try and speak the truth, what happens? You get demonized. They, they'll, they'll cut out your comments. The, like even my videos are, uh, what are you, shadow banned? You know, and thy word, the, the world did hate them because they are not of the world. Those that are of God are not of the world. They came from above. That's why their understanding is of light. And the children of darkness understanding is of darkness. As I am not of the world. Jesus is not of the world. I do not ask that thou mayest take them out of the world. But they, that thou mayest keep them out of the evil. What evil? Keep us out of lies. Of the world they are not. As I of the world am not sanctify them in thy truth did you see that word truth thy word is truth let me read that again 1717 the number 17 represents the bible i mean re represents heaven sanctify them in thy truth thy word is truth as thou didst send me to the world i also did send them to the world and i and for them do I sanctify myself, that they also themselves may be sanctified in truth, and not in regard, oops, and not in regard to those alone do I ask, but also in regard to those who shall be believing through their word in me, not the ones that have no truth in them, but the ones that have truth in them. We are here to liberate those that have truth in them that they all may be one as thou, Father, in me and I in thee, that they also in us may be one, that the world may believe that thou didst send me, and I, the glory that thou hast given to me, have given to them, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect into one, and that the world may know that thou didst send me and didst love them as thou didst love me. This is also touched upon in John 8. Very good to read John 8 and all of 17. John 17. Father, those whom thou hast given to me, I will that were where I am, they also may be with me, that they may behold my glory that thou didst give to me because thou didst love me before the foundations of the world. Remember, the Elohim was also with God before the foundations of the world. That's why it's plural. Let us make man in our image. Righteous Father, also the world did not know thee, and I knew thee, and these have known that thou didst send me. I made known to them thy name and will make known that the love with which thou lovest me in them may be, and I in them. Remember, God the Father, the Son, is light. We are part of the light. We are children of the day. These are children of the night. We, during the night, are asleep. 
we wake up in the day and we work in light. This is also similar to relativity. We live in relativity in today.